the grip. So as soon as you start playing tennis, um, do me just one favor. I don't want to be too crazy with the grip. I just don't want you to hold a racket like a pan, like a pancake grip. Um, serve grip. So you can have an Eastern grip like this. I'm fine with that at the beginning because from an Eastern to a Continental to change it in the future doesn't take so much than going from a Western pancake to a Continental, which is a, a big, uh, big challenge. So when you go, ideally you want a Continental. So you have the index knuckle and the heel pad, the index knuckle and the heel pad. If you draw a line, you have that on the second bevel, which is not the top one, which is the one here. And then you just go straight down and you hold your racket so you can surf. The Eastern is a little bit around, so you're going to hold it like this. And for a perfect, like for a good Continental for the beginning, I always tell players, especially when they're beginners, you just go around here and take the racket out like a sword. And it's going to give you a pretty good um, grip on the serve. So the serve is one of the most complex things. And um, like when you start serving, so make sure that the toes point to the net post in that direction. Your belly button points to the crowd, I always say, call that. So let's say I'm st starting here. My belly button points to the crowd, with the sheep, which is you guys, the toes to the, to the spectators and uh, to, the net, to the net post. And ideally, the, the heel of the front foot is kind of like here with the left foot is in the middle of the right foot here. And the right foot is parallel to the baseline. So now when you start, Oh, that was a good one. It doesn't bounce, old ball. So when you start, a lot of players, and I do the frontal, when they start, they are like this. So they're opening, they're standing straight forward already, which you don't want. You don't want to be like this and serve like this. So the belly button, and using reference points always helps with the serve. The belly button points to the right. When you start, don't hold the left arm in the racket here you start on the right side a little bit. I always say kind of 45 degree on the right side. So you want to start here. You have different starting points. Some go around used to be here. You can, some people hold the ball on the strings. This is all feel and cosmetic where you're holding it. But what you want for sure is to hold your racket a little bit to the right and I'll, I'll explain the foot position. From the start, remember, you don't want to over squeeze your racket. The serve is something you cannot squeeze. If tennis squeezing it and breaking it at zero dropping, you hold it on two, you lose. And one little tip and trick I want to tell you when you start, let's say you're serving your first serve, here's the line. When you start and you're ready, always the chest out when you start, always try to have a good posture. When you're holding it here, drop it. So when the tip starts to point down, what is my wrist doing now? It's relaxing, right? And I used to whip it like this before I start, so I remember, you know, to go up and, and serve. So when you're starting and you have a you have a serve, let the tip point a little bit down. That will relax your wrist. Remember that. Very important. It's 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 a good one. Okay. So that that said, like you're starting here. A big problem, especially for junior players. If you if you're a junior player out there and you're watching this. And you're young, very young, let's say you're a kid, like, I don't know, you're young. Uh, you know, when the pros can start here and then toss the ball up, a young kid is going to have problems tossing the ball up starting low. So for the kids, I would recommend old school standing up here, higher, starting higher, because now the way the racket and the, and the ball travel down, weight is on the front leg, weight goes back. So now the, the way from here to here is way longer. So if you time it good, you have more support on the toss. So young kids, I would always, I would always start them higher. They, you take your racket usually to your, to your waist with you and then you toss the ball up with a straight arm and then you, the, 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 the racket goes up, palms down and you're in this position here. And then you coil a little bit, and then you look like this. So, again, from this view here, so you start high, front weight on the front leg, you go back here, 
you toss the ball up and you get into this position here. I always call that. So the trophy position is important for many things. So when the ball is at the peak of the toss, when you look at the slow-mo and the pros, they are in this position here. And then when the ball travels down and is about to go into your strike zone, that's when from here, in old school they told you racket edge. The inside goes in and then the outside shoots out. First the elbow, then the forearm and then the outside goes out and then you pronate and hit that ball. Uh, my good friend Ryan from Two Minute Tennis, he has this party hat where you know you can say salute when you're up here so here's a party hat where you knock the party hat off and then there's a, a fine line as well a lot of players when they toss the ball up right they're dropping too early in this position so you as a you can, you have to hold this up this position until the ball starts to drop and then it's not just getting the racket a little bit here it's your whole arm that helps you a little bit to get down here and then shoot up and hit that ball. So a lot of players, they just go up here and they don't get any power. You get the power from being here and going down here and shooting out. Um, so toss direction varies. Slice and flat serve, you want to toss it to one o'clock and you want to straighten it out. I like to teach the slice first because if you teach the slice, if you learn the slice first, you have always a straight arm and you're extending the racket. A lot of players who teach the kick first, they're going to be here and they're not extending out. It's harder for them to extend out. That's in my 25 years of teaching, what I learned when I taught the slice serve first, the kick serve, they were straightening the arm out and they never had problems with that. The kick serve, you want to be somewhere between 11.30 and 12. And remember, the toss is one of the most important things. Uh, see it as a free, like if you watch soccer, and you have the same free kick position 10 times and you have to shoot in the left corner of the box of the goal and the first one goes way too high so you were like leaning too far back the second one you have the same position where you're practicing you put your weight a little bit more forward you hit goes too far to the left so you always adjust every free kick but you have the same position where the ball is in tennis when you look at Federer and Djokovic when they toss the ball up the ball is about 20 centimeters difference. That's where all the balls land, so their toss is perfect. 20 centimeters is not long. So they got the toss down. When you look at the recreational player or you look at the pro, uh, the, the media player, they spray and therefore they never feel what it feels like. Let's say you have a slice serve. They, don't, they never feel actually, because the contact point is always somewhere else, how much they have to snap and how much they, they feel that ball up there, you know, if it's always somewhere different, you're never going to feel it. So you really have to work on the toss. And the toss is so important, let's say you, you're one of the players that tosses too far to the left, always find a wall and toss the ball and keep the arm here, keep the arm straight here. Try to toss it straight up. If you're one of the players that tosses too far to the right, toss the ball up the same. You can use the wall, it's going to stay here, just for the feel of the toss. Another thing for the toss, put an elastic band around your hands and just feel that you're doing something here. Like don't flick the wrist, hold the ball and place it. I like the word placing. When you toss, so you place the ball up and feel like you have a cup of tea up there and you want to control this motion. You don't want to go fast. Um, very important on, on, on the surf. Um, yeah, and then you have platform and pinpoint. The pinpoint is when you drag your foot on and serve, and platform is when you, when you are already um, standing where you are. So it's, that's a feel thing too. I feel for a taller person, like, isn't there when you slide it on, I feel like I have more power and I can rip that ball better. And the platform is very important. If you teach the platform, that there are not so many moving parts, like this part with the toss, you can mess it up, especially if you're a beginner. It's easier if you have a, a set, base and you toss the ball up and you just worry about the toss and the hitting and uh, if you you know if you have the pinpoint too many things can go wrong and um, yeah so when you when you have the platform you're unstable and the stability is one of the most important things uh, on the serve you need a good stable base 
If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Other than that, I will continue. And uh, let me just go back here. All right. Um, so what else on the surf do we need to know? Yeah, um, if you, I would practice the slice surf. So what is one of the things the students don't feel comfortable with when they practice the slice? So you, let's say you're one of the players who didn't have the right grip and they the coach changes you to a continental. What is the first thing that happens? When you slice it, you hear a different sound and the ball goes to the left. And most of the times you play next to someone, they go on their court. So the coach, I like to push the player way off the court on the right side, the right, furthest right you can go. Start your player up here to, to isolate the rest. Top, let them toss and let them slice. So they're not going to be able to hit to the other court, so they're going to feel more comfortable. And always, if you shorten the motion, like if you start up here, it's easier for, you, for, for the players uh, if you have a major change. And remember, you know, when you're in this position here, when we get the racket up, palms are down. So we go palms down, and I call this always the cobra here. Like, <laughs> adults like that, they play around, they goof off like when it's here, like the cobra. That, so they're right here, and they lose when they actually do that. That's, a, that's just a, that worked well for me, so if you want to use it, feel free.